save on Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet because they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew. Let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Anywho. They're entertaining everyone, so who's going to grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on Stars in the Hi, everyone. Anywho. Hi, guys. Welcome to episode oh, no, the... 202. Two. Two. But we're, we're so... celebrating our 200th episode. It's like a continuation. This is like part two. I just realized it's kind of like my birthday because my birthday is February 28th, but I always celebrate it for an entire month afterwards. I'm always like, telling people, <laughs> like I'm going to brunch for my birthday. They're like, but it's March 17th. I'm like, uh-huh. So basically, this is an extended celebration. Of this whole week. Episode. Yeah, you're right. Because we started part one of this was actually episode 199. And then we had Night at the Museum on Thursday. I still can't believe that that uh, happened. Yeah, so many movies. So many movie stars. We've never had so many movie stars and stars in the house. I can't believe it. And then tonight, we had so many clips. So thank you, Paul Ewan. Um, yeah, Paul Human um, edited um, almost all of our clips. David Katz did some. Paul yeah, Heumann David did, did some, and Paul, Paul did kept... actual search, and we'd say, "Find an amazing Doctor Who clip," and he would find it and or, edit or it, or put our blooper reel together that we that we showed before. So we've got a lot more, and we've got special guests, There's a lot of, of course. Celebrities coming that have like been on the show a lot, tell fun stories, and we have um, some of the producing staff, which has never really been on camera before. Yes. Um, <clears> but first, we have like, oh, well, wait, sorry, this is Stars in the House. That's right. So stars what is house, Stars in the House? Yeah, for people that have not seen it which i feel like everyone on here probably has seen it oh by the way i love this my birthday what? is may 28th he says i celebrate the whole month of may. <laughs> Thank you. i said i do after i like to after celebrate well that's because your birthday is february 28th his birthday is look may 28th they do the whole pre wait a minute oh See? i didn't take that in that it was exactly the 28th just saying and wow. to the hoop okay starts in the house of the fundraiser for the actress fund the actress fund is a misnomer which misnomer is also my drag name. And what it means oh, is that it's not it's either, either you say drag name or an SAT word. I, listen, here's the thing. I have two jokes. and I <laughs> The point is, it's for anybody in the business, no matter what you do artistically, uh, if you help the arts in any way, you can get help from the Actors Fund. You go to actorsfund.org right. if you need help paying your health insurance, especially right now, groceries. Rent. Yeah, I was just talking to, I, I'm not going to name names, a, a Tony Award winner this afternoon. And, and I asked her about her health insurance and she said that it went from equity to SAG and then she was in a show that closed down and she didn't even realize that she had literally just enough weeks to get her six months of health insurance. So she's good until April 1st, but it, like after that, yeah, what I happens? Think, and she's literally like a Broadway star. I think Judy Kuhn, I remember tweeting about that. She's going to be on the show, so we should talk about health insurance. Yeah, and that's where the Actors Fund is, is one of many reasons to help them are people, not just actors, but just like Anybody. people all over, right? And that are in the performing arts. So and if, yeah, well, yeah go ahead. If you're in front of the house, if you're an usher, if you're right. a general manager, if you're a camera operator, anything you can turn to help with the Actors Fund, actorsfund.org for help. But if you can help the actual people that need the help, if you have some extra cash lying around, um, get thee to starsinthehouse.com, make your donation. As soon right. as you do, it's going to be, um, you're going to get a receipt. Forward the receipt right. to donations at starsinthehouse.com, and then we'll send it to somebody. Mark Shaman's going to be here later. Maybe he'll set your donation to Muzak. And, or you can text fund 2020 to 56512. So we, okay, um, I do want to, you know what? We didn't say yesterday what our total is because I am really hoping our, so we had our 200th episode this week. Our six month anniversary is on Wednesday. September 16th. September 16th. It's actually been six months. And um, I we can't announce it yet, but we have a huge TV reunion. I'll give a hint. It's a return of a show that has already been on Stars in the House. That was super popular. And was so popular that the uh, person who's like the star said, oh, let's do it differently. And we're going to all have fan questions and we're going to divide it differently. So it won't be everyone on screen at the same time. It's going to be really cool. But I'm hoping that on that day, we will reach the half a million dollar mark. And I have a feeling that we will because we're up to our total because we didn't announce it yesterday. We People were, have been so generous this week with our 200th episode. We're up to $474,645 raised for the Actors Fund. Wow. Um, by the way, so, this is so funny. Someone just commented, um, they've never noticed 
We have an awesomely color coordinated <laughs> bookshelf behind us. It's so funny. It is so not us. We so don't have that kind of visual eye. It's our daughter, Julia, that yes. does it. We don't like literally don't know anything about anything artistic except for like performance wise. Seth, speaking of uh, students, no, speaking of students, Julie's age, okay. we have uh, someone here, a student from Pole Hero Project. Please welcome Lucy Duckworth. Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for doing Pole Hero. We'd love to know, for people that don't know, what Pole Hero is. Lay it on us. Yeah, so the Pole Hero Project is a group of young people recruiting young people to work the polls in the general election. Um, so, you know, you may or may not know, but there's been huge poll worker shortages, especially in the primaries, because poll workers tend to be um, on the older side and because of coronavirus, um, aren't so inclined to come in and work the polls, understandably. Um, so it's really up to, you know, Gen Z, younger people to step up and fulfill that responsibility. Like myself. Silence. <laughs> the point is, if you are, if you're younger than I am, get the to pollhero.org. They really need young people. There, there really is a major shortage. What if we were talking to Ari? What was he talking about? Philadelphia? Avi. Avi. Uh, uh, yeah, Avi said that I, I think for the you probably know better than me, Lucy. But in the primary this year in Philadelphia, it was something like what is it? Like sixty five hundred workers were needed, but there was like a shortage of four thousand or something. What was that? I mean, something pretty crazy. There's generally like 8,500 poll workers in Philadelphia, and there were 2,500, which is a major loss. And you know, there was voting by mail, um, but still, we saw huge, huge um, uh, shortages. And in my precinct alone, there are generally four poll workers who work the elections, and three of them dropped out. So that gives you some sort of idea of of what we're dealing with. I mean, there's there's such a loss that needs to be made up. So no. listen, young people listening, this is not just helping democracy happen. It's literally a job. You can get money. And then on top of that, you don't even necessarily have to be 18 in certain states. So you could be younger than 18 in certain states, but no matter what, it is a paid job, right? It is. It's, you know, depending on where you live, it's between 100 and $300 which is a lot, especially for, for a 16 year old. And a lot of us don't even have school. So what are you doing? You know, you can <laughs> go over a day and make $300. I mean, I'm excited to do it too. So, and then you get to, you know, protect democracy. So that's always exactly. If <laughs> so you go to pollhero.org, you guys are so great. Thank you, Lucy. You're one of the many great people that have been here from Poll Hero. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, by one more question. Is that literally a Stairmaster behind you and a recumbent bike? <laughs> What's happening? I mean, it converted home gym, so it is a recumbent bike. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's good for my back. All right, talk to you later. Thanks, Lucy. Bye, Lucy. <laughs> Just axing. Uh, um, so great. So, pollhero.org. And guys, even if you can't join yourself, please spread the word how important this is. Just post that wherever you are. And one more uh, website thingy. Can you yeah. guys, uh, everyone watching right now, it would be great if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yes. We have so many people watch all the time. We always forget that. Yeah, just subscribe. It's so quick. And that way, the more subscribers we have, the easier it is to get. We're like 100 away from 30,000. At Stars in the House. Just just subscribe. A to the Seth, staff. I'm so impressed that you remembered. I know. We, every day we go, we have to remember. We Literally forget. at the end, it's always, we forget. Okay. So wait, so what should we, uh, by the way, yes, it's true. Millennials, yes. Anybody basically that's in good health, anyone that's in good health should be doing Poll Hero. Oh, wow, I love this. Poll Hero segment is becoming my Aww, favorite. Oh, look so at fun. that, Lucy. I love that. <laughs> that's great. Um, okay, so. Um, I say really that we bring on our, the second guest that we had, ever had, on Stars in the House. Oh, that was the because, second day? Yes. That Tuesday afternoon, right? Yes. Here she is, the fabulous multi-thousand Tony nominated and Olivier as well, the fabulous Judy <laughs> Kuhn. <laughs> Hi, Judy. Thousand. Right? You were not. I feel like every show you do, you've been nominated for Tony Award, except for Metro. I went there. How are you, lady? <laughs> but, I mean, Metro <laughs> isn't even on wrong. That makes no sense. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, so was on our very second show at Tuesday when we used to have two shows a day. Mm -hmm. So in our two PM show, and you hauled out. Everyone had to sing three songs in those days. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We can't. It, my gosh, it feels like a, it was a different time for well, okay. everyone. That was my first experience with this and figuring out like, well, wh what do I do? Like, how do I make sure I'm not in the dark? And how do I? Where do I put my computer? And can you hear me? And uh, oh, I was right. So, you know, I was, I do remember you tweeting something about health insurance. Oh. Am I right about 
about people losing health insurance or you expecting weeks from assassins and then not getting, I can't remember what it was, but I feel well, I, I, don't know. I tweeted about that, but I, yeah, well, I was, when we were, um, it started rehearsals for assassins and we worked for two weeks before we shut down and then they paid us for two weeks after that. So that was four health weeks. What a lot of people don't understand is that you get your health insurance based on how many weeks you work in each six to 12 month period. Right. And because I worked in London the season before, I lo I didn't have any health weeks here over here. Right. And, you know, there's no reciprocal thing because they have national health insurance and everybody gets health insurance for free. <clears throat> well, I mean, everybody pays in their taxes, but you right. don't have to earn it or buy it or whatever. Right. So um, anyway, so I was three weeks away from getting my health insurance back. And the other thing that people don't know is that you bank these weeks, but then if you don't use them, they expire. So by the time we get back to work, whenever that is, I will have once again, like all probably every other actor in this business, zero weeks, and we'll be starting from zero again. Wow. So hold on a second. So mm -hmm. what happens? I mean, I know the actors when is helping people, but if people aren't getting their health insurance, what what do you even do? I don't even know. Well, I'm fortunate because right now I'm being covered by my husband's plan, which he gets through the writer's guild. <clears throat> yeah. if, if that runs out before everybody goes back to work, I don't know. I guess we go on the open market and try to buy. I don't know. I don't yeah. even want to think about that right I now. I know. Uh, let me ask I something know. also. You know, a lot of people are busting, you know, England for socialized medicine. I'm like, it's a nightmare. Did you have any experience with socialized medicine over there? Oh my God. And I mean, by the way, let's be clear. You know, we, we the, peop the people love to call it socialism. Right. But once once all those people who say it's going to be the ruin of us, once they turn 65 and they're on Medicare, they're quite happy about it. <laughs> right. They don't think about it as socialism anymore. They just think about it as their health insurance that they earned through their the taxes that they paid all their working lives. Right. So, you know, the other thing is that in, in England, it's, yes, there's a national health service, which everybody is entitled to, but there's also a, a private, there's a whole private market as well. There are doctors who aren't on the that system and you can go to them and then you pay. You can also buy insurance to cover those doctors. So there's choice, but I did have some experience with the healthcare system over there and it was amazing. Hmm. I mean, I had it, this infection in my eye, which is not great when you have to go on stage. <laughs> and I walked in, I went, went on my way to the theater. I walked into a clinic. Um, I filled out a form with my name and my address. They said, sit right, I, and I kept saying, I'm not a citizen of the UK. I said, it's right. okay, sit down. And um, tw I waited 15, 20 minutes. I saw this lovely nurse practitioner. He looked at my eye. He gave, he gave me some medicine for it. I walked out. I went to the front where I'd signed in, and I said, what do I owe you? And she looked, because I'm not a citizen, right. and she looked at me and she went, oh, no, we're free for all. Wow. <laughs> I said, I'm from America. You never hear <laughs> that in America. And I also went to a private doctor because I lost my voice. And I went to, you know, one of those doctors that meet, look at your right. vocal cords. And um, they, I was charged for it. And um, it was so little money. My, I, my uh, jaw dropped. And she said, oh, would it not be that much in New York? And I said, no. <laughs> 10 times that in New York. Oh, wow. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, there you go. It says it all. I was going to say, speaking of medical needs, I forgot about this that my, I think my audience will enjoy. Judy had a medical accident when we were about to do one of our concerts. Oh. <laughs> so Judy and I were doing a big concert on Long Island, and we had our, you know, our sound check on stage, and we went through all of her belting and her high soprano because she does both. And then... <laughs> 
<laughs> I was at the piano and she's like, I'm going to my dressing room. And then I hear like, clankety clunk. Ah, the hell. Okay, so Judy, what happened when you walked away from me? Because that was so scary. Oh, I tripped over some poorly placed, badly managed cables that were run right across the threshold of the door that went from the backstage area to the dressing room area. I went flying forward and broke my elbow. Well, it was a quarter to eight. And See, it's dangerous working with Seth. I have the scar to show it. It's actually, it's this elbow. Thank, Thank you. you. forgot. <laughs> There's my scar. Can you see my scar? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I had to have it surgically fixed. Judy was like, now. I must go on. She was in her dressing room. She's like, I'm fine. And like her I elbow was like I that. I think I could go. I think I could sing. Just give me a stool and a sling. I'm like, <laughs> Judy, it's not happening. So finally, it's eight o'clock and the whole audience wow. is there. And we're like, Judy, you have to go to the hospital. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, basically, like she left, so I had to be like, "Colors of the Wind." <laughs> no, basically, I had to do my own comedy show, but it was a nightmare. And by the way, she'd been cast like that was right before she went to London, and she was about to go star in Fiddle on the Roof. All right, weren't you like, "Oh my God, am I going to get to go to London?" I thought I wasn't when I first went to the uh, the um, orthopedist. I said, "I'm supposed to get on a plane in four weeks and start rehearsals for a show in London." He was said. Mm, I'm not so sure about that, but it all worked out in the end. So you would have lost one of your many Olivier nominations. <laughs> um, now, two things I want to say. Speaking of concerts, Judy and I have a big concert coming up. Not this Sunday. All right, but the Sunday after. Yeah, we do something Sorry. called the Seth Concert Series. I'm going to put it up so everybody looks at me and Judy together. The That's concert. the reason why we don't have stars in the house on Sunday nights. Yes, because I do my own concert. There we go. And I want to say Judy was one of the stars of Les Mis, and she recreated her signature high note for us on Stars in the House. So, Judy, would you like to do it right now? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That's panic in her eyes. Yeah, that's right. Poor but I will Judy. show this is this is her brilliant recreation with the original Eponine and the original Angera because he was filling in for Marius. But here we go. Take this is on Stars in the House. Do I dream? I'm away. Kind of go. <laughs> <laughs> you got the note, girl. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about Judy? She'll be singing more of that at the Seth Contra series a week from this Sunday. Thank you, Judy. Thank, Thank you, for you Judy, for so dropping right show. Thank you, guys. See you next Sunday. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Uh, by the way, we want to thank that amazing video editing and so many yes. great videos we've had. Shelby Rassler. She does them all for us for free. She does the, all that amazing editing and putting in photos in the past. She did the whole carry thing with Betty Buckley. That's right. Um, so Shev, Shelby Rassler, thank you so much for 200 episodes of Bravo Honest. I think we should go back a little bit. And uh, David, if you want to, if you want to join on here, um, because when we, you know, we Broadway shut down on the March 12th, we had been in Houston. We flew back to New York on March 13th. We came up with the idea for Stars in the House on Saturday, March 14th. And then Sunday, we were like, how are we going to do this? So, David, yes. pop on. Here he is. David Katz. Hi, David. You're muted as usual, girl. <laughs> You're either muted or your voice sounds crazy. Hi, lady. <laughs> um, you ah! to get me back. <laughs> That's right. So That's David right. and James found StreamYard, and David, I see you have the amazing clip. So we're um, we're going to show this fun clip, and Gage, who created StreamYard, Gage, you have to see how James and I are talking about. Because here's the thing: all James and I knew was Facebook Live. So we were right. like, we're going to go on Facebook Live, but Facebook Live is just one video. So 
you guys, you and James are like, how are we going to have more than one person on screen, right? That's what you guys started investigating. Right, and we wanted to like, you know, make it a little bit more fun and have names and graphics and photos and we're able to show videos. It's so amazing. And um, yeah, we just wanted to make it, you know, and then we found out we could do comments and it just made it a lot more user friendly and it's a really easy software. And that's why we've been able to have like 700 guests on the show over about yeah 202 shows about 700 guests between everything because we can now have up to 10 people on the show david do you remember because i remember it being a sunday morning and it was like between Streamyard, we had we had both kind of i think done our own investigating right and like it was like Streamyard, and i don't even remember the other name of the, the other, other, other company but i do but it doesn't matter no but we, we didn't pick it no but, we just kind of like picked it because why? Because it streamed to so many places screen. and we could. Well, well, because we could, yeah, we could stream to so many places um, and we could kind of have like a studio feel where we can create the, the layout of the show and we're able to, you know, change the camera angle and like we have the stars in the background, but right. you know, sometimes we want to get fancy and we want it to be blue, you know, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's, it's, um, it's 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 more customizable and it's um it's a great platform to be able to to connect people on an iPad, an iPhone, computer, Mac. It sounds like whatever. A but it's not because the point I, of Zoom, you can't show up like video videos are so much more difficult to show on Zoom. We want to do that. Facebook Live, you can't go to all these different I mean Stuff we take for granted now it was such a big deal when we discovered StreamYard. We're just used to it now. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And I and so I don't remember. I think that we're going to bring out the, I believe, and he'll tell us, um, the co-founder, discoverer, creator. Let's just bring on Gage from StreamYard. Gage. Hi, Gage. Hi. Do you have, do you have like a green screen behind you, literally? <laughs> yeah, I've got a physical one behind me because we have that green screen feature, so I use it for, for testing. But thanks so much for, for having me on. I'm excited to be part of the, uh, two, the celebratory episode for uh, number 200. Well, your name is at the end of every episode, so uh, we, we, uh, you know, we all we wanted to really, we wanted to say publicly, thank you and your entire staff because you've just been incredible. And talk about we couldn't, we couldn't do it without you. Not with the, not with the level of professionalism and being able to to show clips to you know for our guests and all all of everything that you guys do. We just wanted to say thank you. Um, by the way, sorry. I didn't mean to push, push that comment, but FYI, what is David's last name? I think it's Katz. That is true. <laughs> oh, my God. He's so young. <laughs> it's okay. to see that. But by the way, Games, you're also so young. So you created this stream yard with what? With one of your friends? Like you guys were just like playing hacky sack and you're like, hey, <laughs> what about this website? Yeah, I guess something like that. Maybe Dan, Dan is the uh, other co-founder of StreamYard. So Dan and I were friends in, in university. Uh, always loved building stuff. Uh, together, always was sort of fast. We were always sort of fascinated by um, things like Skype and Zoom, just because their ability to connect people across uh, the, the world. And we thought we could maybe make a splash in the uh, live streaming space by making something super easy for people to make uh, live shows. So yeah, we we're super excited to be part of uh, yeah your guys' journey when when moving on to uh, so going online from being in uh, you know, because of obviously the situation we find ourselves in. So uh, yeah, excited to have you guys using the tool. Because before us, you were mainly like for business meetings, like here is my chart, right? It wasn't really an entertainment street. Um, no, yeah. no, definitely not. So the, yeah, having folks from Broadway <laughs> using it has definitely been exciting and a new uh, experience. So we've definitely added some features to sort of cater to that, which has been uh, exciting. But before, uh, before the pandemic, it was, yeah, primarily like uh, business folks and people with small companies doing sort of content marketing type uh, stuff. Well, it's almost become for me, I, and I know for David too, that it was like from the beginning, we were like, oh, they're using StreamYard. They're using StreamYard. <laughs> it was like, it was so fun because because we knew it. And then like the little things that I know now have been worked out, David and I would be like, okay, like when, Ro like when Rosie O'Donnell did her special and there was like a sound glitch and we knew how to like the quirk, remember David? We were like, we text each other at the same time. This is how you fix it. And we were so frustrated. We wanted it to, you know, obviously be so spectacular. And it was, but we, we wanted to be there and fix it. Cause we were yeah. like, ah, we know, you know, yeah. give me all the tricks. And James, you haven't even seen this. This is the first, oh. this is the first episode when we were like, is this split screen going to even work? Oh, we that's hadn't funny. Done it so okay. this is it. Five seconds. And then Sunday morning while this one was asleep, um, uh, <laughs> I started investigating 
how we could make, I said to myself, maybe there's a way besides like Skype on the laptop in the corner that there has to be something that we don't know. And sure enough, there was with the help of David Katz. And David Katz, thank you so much. Um, we were able to figure that out together and then- So we could do crazy split yeah, screens. Exactly. Also, David Katz came up with all these graphics you're gonna see. Anyway, what else do I have to say? Oh yeah, so we're about to begin it. Uh, right, we're about to begin it. James just wants everyone to know we are not technically savvy. I think, I think Kelly and Dr. LaPoot want that too. Because who knows what's gonna happen. Yeah, none of us, none of us know what we're doing technically. Right. All right, so let me introduce our first guest, Miss Kelly O. Harris. Split screen. Woo! It works. Hi. Now I know why it was such a big deal because we were so used to Zoom where you couldn't do that. We now I'm right. You said that we're gonna literally put people on a Skype on my iPhone and hold it. That's what our plan was. <laughs> I mean, I forgot that we we're gonna just hold them up on like FaceTime and talk I to can't them. Believe we never that. knew we could have. I mean, it's so funny. Like we're so used to it now. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Gage, for also for your support and and uh, you know giving us the ability to to reach out to you guys and and Dana and Kelsey and all the support. You know, countless hours of, of figuring things out and little little things, but we really appreciate that. It's been really instrumental in in growing things for the for the show. And more of course, importantly, of course, we're, or sorry, go ahead. No, say more importantly, what is the name Gage? Sorry, I got to focus on that for a second. What is it? <laughs> uh, Gage. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why my parents <laughs> spelled it oh, like that. Okay, forget it. Sorry, I, don't it. It's, I don't think it's a real name. But, uh, but, well, uh, go so ahead. That, I was just going to say, of course, we're more than happy to uh, uh, support you guys. What you're doing is 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 great, and we're more than happy to uh, support it. And it's it's amazing that you're at episode 200. Like that's that's crazy. So uh, fun fun to be uh, part of the uh, celebration. Uh, well, you know, when, when, uh, Seth and I were doing, or I, sh I was doing the tech for, um, Black Theater United's, they did two big events. And one of them was, was with Sherilyn Eiffel, who's the head of the NAACP legal defense fund. And when I was teching her, she was like, what is this platform? And, and I told her, I always felt like I was, and I still do like a paid, Ambassador. a paid spoke, <laughs> not, but it's like, cause I just, I believe in StreamYard so much and, and we're also appreciative uh, of everything that you're that you're always there for us but that was one of the things with with um samantha watson at at um ldf and she was like you know we want to do more events but we can never get anyone at zoom and i said well you'll never have that problem with Streamyard." and sure enough the next week i know that sam had a meeting with uh two folks from Streamyard, and she was and i texted her and she was like they are great so <laughs> i mean you know we're just we're just appreciative and wanted to say thank you of course, of course. Thanks so much for for having me on. And yeah, shout out to our wonderful Streamyard support folks. They're they're yeah. definitely great. Yes, they're and the you best. Know, David is not just a tech director. It's so funny. Someone online actually <laughs> heard of you. I hear David is a great singer. This guy Alan Katz. <laughs> you meet him one day. Ignore him. <laughs> Good old girl. All right. Well, thank, thank you, Gage, David. and thank you, David. Thank you, guys. Thank. Bye. Bye. Okay, so That's we have great. so we many. Clips. Great clips. Okay. There's Shaman. Shaman. Shaman, you're early. But um, hi, Shaman. He knows. He's just watching. Okay, so we're showing watching. all these fun clips here. I'm just gonna go. There's so many. The just go. This is just you know one of our many many guests. This is Audra off the. Audra's on it so many times. She's also a first weeker. She was the first Saturday matinee. Yeah. Look at this, Audra. What? Wow. Oh, buongiorno, Italia. Um, we are. Oh. I don't sing classical music anymore. <laughs> that was a comment for our Sirius XM listeners. That was a comment from Italy because yes. people watch live around the world. Here's another comment uh, made to Billy Porter, which I love. Hey, Billy, look at this. So sweet. Billy Porter, you're brilliant, <laughs> my friend. And I have to say, when my son came out, he said, I want to be open and honest and brilliant like Billy Porter. No. Oh. Please don't make me cry today. I've been crying too much already. <laughs> My favorite Billy comment. I was going to show it tonight, but I didn't. I didn't get the. I didn't get the edit. But he he was late because he was doing a phone call with Amy Klobuchar, and he wanted to basically say that now he segued from being, um, you know, just an actor to being political. But he talks in the third person. And he goes, he's like, I was on the phone with Amy because she's a political bitch now. By the way, about himself. About she's himself. A political right. bitch now. It was such hilarious verbiage. Oh my God. Sh Seth, sh our, our, the guest who's been like literally halfway around the world and has been with us, uh, well, 
uh, has she been with us? She's been with us more than once. Yeah, Leia Salonga, yeah. all the way from the Manila, Philippines. We, again, having just had Gage on, we couldn't believe that it worked. Well, it was two things. amazing. We're live. So we were right. doing a 2 p.m. show. Manila right. is literally 12 hours ahead. So it was 2 a.m. in the morning. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yes, you're right. Yeah, no, you're she right. She's like, I'm not waking up early. Yeah. So she stayed up till 2 a.m. And what I love about this clip is that this was when this was really early on when medical staff was just so yeah. in New York, so extremely overwhelmed. I mean, I can't even imagine what it was like, but there's a beautiful comment from yeah. um, some medical people. Here we go. My mom is a doctor facing 24 oh. seven shifts because of COVID-19. But every time she hears you sing, her stress just goes away. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, very sweet. That is so lovely. And I, and I guess that, um, that's why the singers and the artists, that's why we do what we do at this time. It's, it might not seem like a lot, but if it helps somebody, if it helps a frontliner get through the day or even through an hour of a shift, then we've, we've, we've done, we've done some good. We got this photo of, of nurses taking a break from their shift to watch stars in the house. That's them. <gasps> oh! Isn't that Yay! nice though? Mental Isn't break it? on our lunch break. Yay! It makes a difference. Oh, <laughs> I mean, we were just noticing. It's like that was one of our four or five set changes, and um, we kept repositioning. And we actually, I think, I think we're moving again. <laughs> I think, I think this may be one of the last episodes where our longtime viewers will be seeing that behind us. Oh, coordinated because James we and I are splitting up. <laughs> So we're gonna be doing it from my bachelor <laughs> pad. No, we're just going to a smaller. We're gonna go upstairs because the sound will be better. So that this will be one of our last shows with the color coordinated bookcase behind us. Here's uh, one of James' favorite TV shows when they were oh on. Oh my gosh! And they actually I sang. Still can't believe it. Hold on for a series X. Yes. <laughs> this is the cast of This Is Us yes. singing, and who's singing? It's um, uh, is it Sully? Yeah, Sullivan Chris Sullivan. And and yeah. Purple rain, purple rain. Purple rain, purple rain. Only want to see you, baby, in the purple rain. I never wanted to be you. We can Mm -hmm. so, I love that he sounds so great. Yeah. And uh, here's some of my favorite moments because, you know, I'm obsessed with all oh, these. Yes. So these are some of the many, many appearances. That's right. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm Seth. This is James. And this is Stars in the House. And that's oh, our God. dog. Oh, Mandy, come Mandy. on. <laughs> Sorry, my dog doesn't know about Stars in the House or the Actors Fund. Amber, our dog is acting up. I knew Sorry. this would happen. See this? I gave you a heads up that Seth might be leaving because uh, the dog's okay, about yeah. had it being in the quarantine here. Is he asked for Superman or Seth? <laughs> either one, either one. Come here. Julie will be in full glam. Here's a little angel. Just Come here. <laughs> the top two are the same dog that's Mandy, but you can see this Mandy from Animal Care and Control. Then underneath on the left is Chrissy. We got in Aruba shelter. Then Romeo, the kitty cat, we also got from uh, Animal Care Center. Sorry, it used to be called Animal Care right. Control. It's so the Animal Care Center, ACC in New York, which is open right now because you're in essential service. Then Mateo on the bottom left from a Puerto Rico shelter. Yeah. And then Bagel, who's also from Animal Care Center. <laughs> so we're just saying one is not enough. We don't know why you're so lazy. <laughs> No, no, no. We have three dogs. We have, we oh. have two dogs and two, two cats, cats plus Matilda. Forward that receipt to Stars in the House 2020. Oh. That, that was, was our dog. Crazy. I've never heard that noise. <laughs> Stars in the House 2020 at gmail.com. And then we'll get a little hell? list. No, she's just itchy. Um, Stars in the House 2020 at gmail.com. And then we'll get a list and then we'll read them. Jerry Lewis telephone style. But say goodbye to you just so I can hear a horrific echo. <laughs> 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 uh, tomorrow night we will have a matinee we don't Mother's know Day special. Tomorrow, man. <laughs> we have a Mother's we'll Day special tomorrow night. But tomorrow whatever. night, Andrea Martin and Sutton Foster and Lachance and Charlotte Dubois. Well, I'll be tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Dog is going dog crazy. Had it. All right, we always end the show by showing the doggies. Who let the, who let the doggies oh, out? Man. We'll be back tonight, eight o'clock, with Stephanie J. Block and and Sebastian Arcelis and the, Eric McCormick. Oh, and Eric McCormick. I forgot. William Grace. That's right. Eight o'clock tonight. <laughs> All right, you guys. Love you. Thank, Thank you. you. Love you.
<laughs> hey, Mark Shaman, where's your doggy? Hi. Uh, she doesn't like zooms, so she gets very anxious and gets and comes up close. She's on the piano bench right now. But oh, oh what a glory. What's her name? With gold and wonder. What's your first name? Chop. Chops. Oh, wait. wait, Margie Verdon? Chops has the same hairstyle as you. Actually, now I'm looking at it. Here's Margie Verdon. <laughs> Look, with the same golden. <laughs> it's like literally. What color dye does Chops use? <laughs> it's all natural, baby. <laughs> Mine She's too. Still natural. <laughs> all right, Margie, we're gonna, we'll bring you back. We'll bring you back. I just saw the doggy. <laughs> Margie Verdon, we wanted to bring you on. Why, James? Well, because there were two people when we had the idea to do this, besides Brian Stokes Mitchell and Joe Benacasa, we we called David Katz and we called Margie Verdon. Margie Verdon, you are always there when we call. I literally don't think you've ever said no in the last four years from what the world needs now is love to concert for America to, I don't even know what just foster care. foster care with, you got to believe. But who the hell is Margie? Margie, we met because her son, Jonah um, auditioned, sent in an audition video to be in disaster. And I was like, wow, you're amazing. Come for an audition. He's like, great. I'll fly from Atlanta. I was like, what the hell? I didn't realize it was in Atlanta. He and Margie flew up. He gave an amazing audition. We cast him. And I was like, what's happening? You live in Atlanta. And Margie's like, I'll homeschool him. <laughs> and he just moved to home school and they moved to New York. She's she's so easy going about everything. So we loved Jonah and we loved Margie. We became pals. And then Margie became our sort of our right hand executive producer woman. Yeah, Margie, do you did I call you on the, the Saturday or Sunday? Do you remember that weekend? Um, I don't remember which day it was, but anytime you guys call, whenever you call, the answer is yes. Like I'm so happy to always pitch in and help. But the work that you guys do is amazing. I'm just honored to be a part of it. Aww. Margie, you know, unfortunately doesn't have a lot of education. Margie, please tell everybody <laughs> what your crazy, I'm so obsessed with it, what your field was when we first met you. Your bizarre, most specific job. Bizarre. It's not bizarre. Well, bizarre. It is bizarre. <laughs> yeah. So, well, um, my degree is in mechanical engineering and I worked for a defense contractor um, on a space based laser project. Naturally. But one of her fun jobs was. Ooh, by the way, if a missile hit this city, how many people would die immediately? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like when you're Seth, that was classified. Oh. Now you just got burned. <laughs> it's all good. So, so on that, so you're you're either tabulating the dead or you're reaching out to celebrities <laughs> to do our show. I love that sort of a combination. No, Margie's the one who I built the pretty much sums it up, right? <laughs> Is that, but no, but Margie did build a website. We, we don't know how to do that. We asked her one night to build a website. And the next thing we knew, we had starsinthehouse.com. Well, you know, I have my right hand man, Jonah, always helping. So he's kind of the one that's hands on the keyboard when I need something done and I don't know how to do it. You well, got to know your resources, you know? <laughs> if it's after 1 p.m. in the afternoon, he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, where does Jonah go to? He needs his beauty rest. Well, by the way, we love Jonah because Jonah, Jonah <laughs> foolishly wanted to go to a certain college, and I screamed and yelled at him and finally convinced him to go to Oberlin. And now Jonah is a junior at Oberlin, right? Yep. He loves it there so much. We all do. So where are you now? Is that is that one of your signature green screens, or is that your actual background? <laughs> this is my actual background. I'm in uh, the, like our front room. I'm moving my office around now that everything seems sort of more permanent, that I'm not really going to be going back to an actual office. Right. I'm um, moving around the house, trying out different rooms. So this week, I'm in the front room of our house is what it looks like. And that's um, a poster from Southern Poverty Law Center from one of our Concert for Americas. Aww. Yep. Aww. Hey, Margie, you uh -huh. said that because we did part one of this clip and highlights show on um, Wednesday, and I uh -huh. said that if I had to pick my favorite show... Um, I, I would pick free to be and me. And I think for Seth, um, it was probably SCTV, right? Yes, Seth, sure. Margie, I'm putting you on the spot, but was there yeah. like a particular show that, cause I, I know you haven't probably, you haven't had time to watch them all, but I mean, was there one that you were like, Oh, I, I like that particular one. So, um, for me, well, first of all, I like 
all the shows bring something different and, and unique. But for me, there was like a moment, one specific moment. It was really early on mm -hmm. when it just took my breath away. And it was when Le Len Carey you sang. Well, guess what? Yeah, go ahead. We're Keep literally, we, that's so funny because we don't have that many clips, but we actually picked that clip. Wait, what song? And I, and I didn't even know. Yeah, go, Margie. Which one? Yeah, that was it. Um, I think he's saying send in the clowns. Yes, ma'am. But Margie, why, why did, why did, why was that your favorite? Oh, um, just because he's like Broadway royalty and his rendition of that song was just so like raw and touching and beautiful. And, um, I felt like it was such an early step for this series in defining what this show was about. Wow, I I knew you would say that. I actually so didn't well. know you're gonna say that at all. Uh, and oh, that he was gonna describe it. Well. Yeah, yeah, and we were actually gonna close the show with the clip, but because you said that, I did not know that you were gonna say that. It's one of my favorite moments too. Yeah. Seth, hit it. Well, I want to just give the yeah, two seconds of the yeah, background. Go. Yeah, so go. The background story is it was Son oh, yes. it was Sondheim's birthday, and we brought Len Carey on in the afternoon, and he told the classic A Little Night Music story, which a lot of people don't know, which I'm obsessed with. So, a lot of times, you know. Sonam shows they are he's like kind of writing them as they're in rehearsal, like not even during the readings. Like as you're like about to go to Broadway, he's like, Hey, what about this? And it's like, like well, anyway, so he was writing a little night music while they were doing it. And Len Carrie, you had the big eleven o'clock number in act two, but Sonham hadn't written it yet. So Len's like waiting for his big number, waiting for his big number. And he and Glennis Johns were discussing maybe this script wasn't finished either. We're discussing maybe this final scene or the second to last scene between them. So they were improving it. And how Prince said, I love what you guys are doing. He goes, let me bring in Steve and show him the scene. And maybe Len, he'll be inspired to finally write your song. So Len and Glennis Johns ran the scene and Steve and Steve Sonnen was like, okay, got it. And he left. And the next day Steve Sonnen came back and he said, I've, Good news, I wrote the big 11 o'clock number, but the bad news is, Len, it's no longer for you. <laughs> it's for Glennis Johns. So all these years, Len has been like, Glennis stole my big song. <laughs> so that is why he sang the song, because it was rightfully his. But he got Sweeney Todd uh, at the end of the decade, it so it all worked, worked out. out. It all worked out. <laughs> but here's his rendition of the song that was supposed to be his. Here we go. Here's lyrics. Isn't it rich? Are we a pair? Me here at last on the ground, you in midair. Send in the clouds. Isn't it bliss? Don't you approve? One who keeps tearing around, one who can't move. Where are the clowns? Send in the clowns. Just when I'd stopped opening doors. Finally knowing the one that I wanted was yours. Making my entrance again with my usual flair. Sure of my lines. No one is there. Don't you love farce? My fault, I fear. I thought that you'd want what I want. Sorry, my dear. But where are the clowns? Quick, send in the clowns. Don't bother. They're here. Isn't it rich? 
Isn't it queer? Losing my timing this late in my career. And where are the clowns? There ought to be clowns. Well, maybe next year. Wow. <laughs> Oh my God, Dr. John LaPook is filming it. I'm filming it. I'm filming it. <laughs> Hi, John. I'm sorry. I can't wait for the YouTube version. <laughs> that was amazing. We have Chip. We have all of our Sondheim people watching. <laughs> wow, I completely had forgotten all of those other people were there. <laughs> like, amazing. Oh, so I felt like you're singing to me. I hope everyone that was watching tonight felt that way. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Margie, we'll see you on the conference call that we always have. <laughs> <laughs> see you Wednesday morning if you're able to make it. <laughs> yeah. Love you, Margie. We'll start talking about <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, lady. Um, uh, all right. So, by the way, someone just wrote. Um, wait, where is a nice comment? Oh, it's like this episode. It's like this episode was made for me, Judy Kuhn and Mark Shaman. Well, that's so, a good this, cue. So, why don't we bring him back to the screen? Mr. Mark Shaman. Hello. Hi, Mark. Hi, Marky. Hello. What a nice thing that person said. Yes, the episode was made for you, dear. Um, <laughs> Mark, I feel like, the, is this your fifth or sixth? I don't I've lost done, track. I've guest hosted. Seventh show? I don't even know anymore. I Yeah, I, I don't remember. But someday you'll ask me to do it like two or three days in advance. Instead <laughs> of like, uh, five that afternoon. Oh, God, we need someone. No, oh my god. You know what? I like it, dude. You're getting off the damn screen. Uh, I'm a waste of money. What a downer. <laughs> um okay, Mark Shim, I want to show you some fun clips. Now I don't I have not okay, hold on. Let me ask you, Mark, if for for the all the appearances you've made, if we were gonna pick one clip, what would you predict that we would have picked? What do you think we were gonna show? You know what? I'm honestly so old and so <laughs> confused by life that I can't remember. But um, I I don't know. Funny, sad. Um, funny, it's funny. I honestly have no idea. So let me let me remind you. It was about a trip you took around the world. Oh my God! The episode with Jennifer Lewis. <laughs> of course. Oh yes, my God. <laughs> yes. Yes. It. I will show the clip now. Now listen. This is not for. Those under 18. Yeah, for those for those uh well, listening at 4 p.m. on Sirius XM. Yeah, there's definitely cover your ears. Yeah, there's some quote unquote dirty words, but it is Mark is hilarious. It is all just hilarious. Here yes. we go. Enjoy. <laughs> and John Hill is there too. Here we go. And Jennifer Lewis. And in the Gobi Desert, we all rode camels. Hold on. There, there she is. I had sex with both of them. No, no, she <laughs> did. So when we finished the camel rides, I said, how was that, Jennifer? And she says, I think- I Mark, and I was serious because, you know, we rode those camels and those camels hurt. So I looked over at my best friend. I said, Mark, I think I broke my pussy bone. <laughs> so that was all I needed to hear. I went back to our hut and wrote a song called My Pussy Bone Broke on the back of a two hump camel, which we would like to perform for you now. Maybe we don't need the whole intro, Jennifer. Just go and that is a hard pussy bone to break. That is not a That's all we need. That's all we need. Let's do it. Go on. You just can't talk at the same time, or else the sound's gonna go away. So everybody. My pussy bone broke on the back of a two hump camel. No joke, I heard it crack on the back of that mammal. This ain't no time for a laugh. My pussy done broke in half. And next week we ride a giraffe. God help me in my pussy bone. I wish that camel had a microphone. So I could tell the world my pussy bone broke. On the back of a two-hump 
Chicago gone. Why do I feel like? <laughs> Mark Shaman, how could you forget that as your <laughs> most That's memorable amazing. moment? <laughs> well, you've had so many. I mean, 200. God bless you guys. Bravo. My Lord, what you have done. Oh, Marky, you've been here since the very beginning. Yeah. Mark also match donations. Mark, we're going to bring you back. Don't go anywhere. You're one of our favorite guests. Where am I going? I never know with you. All right. You're coming back. Goodbye. Okay. We're bringing on. We watched her. Bellamy, we watched you watch the song, which is hilarious because we can see your face. Here she is. The <laughs> star of Scandal herself. Hi, Bellamy. Bellamy oh, Young. Yeah. Cheers. Happy 200. My goodness. I salute you. Thank you, Bellamy Young. Bellamy Young has only been on the show once, but she's one of our favorite guests because, first of all, she's on our absolute favorite TV show, Scandal. Second of all, she's a big social activist, and she got a start on Broadway like all TV stars. True, true. It's hundred percent true, though. For the Scandal cast, that's, we were all theater babies, so uh, that's yeah, that's not hyperbole. So wait, you were Melly Grant on Scandal, but was when I saw you in the Life, was that your Broadway debut? It was a hundred percent. Oh my gosh. I've been doing, um, uh, Randy Newman and David Mamet had done a treatment of Faust. I don't know if you saw that. We did it at La Jolla. We did a good man. It was, it, it, turned, yes. it got messy. Um, but so we were hopeful that that would be, but it, it turned out the life was, and what a ride. I mean, Lilius alone, the gift of listening to Lilius sing every night is like the best you can hope for. I know, you know, so it was fun. I, I was so heartbroken, Bellamy, because when I moved, I moved to New York in the summer of 1998 and the life had just closed and I was so disappointed. So I was like, I was so close. I know. I know. And we didn't tour anything. You know, we didn't get a lot of Tony love and it. No one thought it would be appropriate in the middle of the country for us to sing some things that we sang. But I still, when I, I'm in LA right now, but going back to New York next week and I live just, you know, around the corner from the Barrymore. So I'm always walking by and oh. my sweet Tony was just there. Tony was, you know, they shut the world down before I could see Tony Goldwyn, his last performance of The Inheritance. And we saw him. It's so good. I was just going back because I love him. But yeah, the, the Barrymore lives in my heart, just in a special, special place. But why did you segue from Broadway musicals? Why did you go all the way to California? Why don't you stay in New York and do another musical? Oh, well, you make it sound so easy. And as if actors have that many choices. Exactly. <laughs> I auditioned and the next job I got took me somewhere else. I mean, it really was like that. And honestly, Seth, I lost my illegal sublet on the Upper West Side. And that's how shit goes. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the girl who I was subletting from, from whom I was subletting, my mother's a grammar teacher. Yeah. Um, she got married and she couldn't have her name on a lease and uh, a rental. And so I, I was out of luck and dating a guy from LA and came out here and got a pilot and started working. So I got, I got lucky that way, but it was all because I lost my illegal sublet. Where were you living? What street? Uh, 75th between Broadway and West End. What? We literally no, I was on 76. I was on 76. I say that wrong. My best friend, who is still one of my best friends, it was on 75th. And now they, she and her husband, live on 76 at West End, the corner, um, 333. They live in that building. And um, so that's where I still stay. So it's still like my street. 250 West 76. Two, wait, what was the address? 250 West 76. 10 years, 252 West 74th. Are you shitting me? We were neighbors? Bellamy, oh, did, so happy. did you ever go to Nico's for breakfast? Um, constantly. Are you kidding? That's like was my mother's favorite restaurant in the world. When they shut down, she grieved for years. We were just talking about how sad we, we still are. We were we were just in the city yesterday, and we were saying we were just or two days ago. Oh, for when we when we had our two hundredth for a night at the museum, and I was uh, like sad because so many sadly so many so many storefronts and restaurants are closing, or are closed. And we were mourning some of like we would used to go to the cottage. Did you ever go to the cottage? Yes, I did. I know what you're talking about. Just closed. So the cottage is closed, but we were saying Nico's closed like 10 years ago, but we Nico's still closed. talk about how much we miss it. I know I still want it. I still that that was there was a little period where I wasn't vegan. I've been vegan since the 80s, but there was a little bit of time where I ate cheese and their big ziti was like everything to me. Everything. Like I might love it more than Pedro. It's hard to say. Wow. The best was they had um corn with a cornflake crusted French toast. Oh, it, I, remember it. I, remember it. 
I remember it. And I, I remember thinking, ooh, at first. And then like, <gasps> like, how will I ever be the same? I'll never be the same. Oh my God, it's so oh. good. Why did they close? I don't know. I, I'm so pissed off about it. Yeah. yeah so, no. So tell me, why have they not offered you like Roxy in Chicago? Like to come back and do a damn show? I don't know. Do you know somebody? Can you make a phone call? I go back in time. <laughs> So you really have not done a musical since the life in 1997? No, I've sung a lot out here, but it's, do you know how it is in Los Angeles? It's, you know, hit or miss and it's a one-off. That's how Pedro and I met. My sweetheart, we met doing a, you know, a, a gig because he's a musician. And But um, but nothing serious and nothing with a family for a while since then. I love it. I love nothing more. You know, we started tracking things in case Prodigal Son didn't go. We started tracking things like Jack a Little pill or like whatever yeah yeah i could get ready for but now it's you know the heartbreak which is why you're doing this wonderful like sustaining this community as you are and please let's talk about you instead of me y'all 200 shows i mean so much that you've done besides that but you know theater is a family and and when we are all alone like this that you have taken time out of your every day to Give us a place to nest, to come home, to be together, Aww. to be nourished. Everybody's so grateful. So thank you and congratulations. And this is the coolest. A is a supportive um, B. I was texting you secretly because I'm sending you donations to Oh, we have donations. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, are you texting me? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. I have a so as to not to so to not do it. Okay. All right. Ready? We're gonna read Go. some. Are you ready? All yeah. right. Daphne from Florida. $25. And she says, happy show 202 and happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, Daphne. One of the best <laughs> things to come out of these weird times. Thank you both for being so amazing and for so many amazing moments. Jocelyn, also from Florida. I love this. I get the Florida texts. $37. Thank you, Seth and James and everybody. Stacy, Bob, and Tobin from New Jersey. $103. I like wow. that. Well, they say congratulations on 200 episodes. Bravo. You've all become part of our quarantine. And every day we look forward to Seth and James making us laugh. Dr. LaFouk being a beacon of calm in this COVID storm. Julie for the TikTok fun and bringing the beautiful sparkle in her dad's eyes. Oh, my God. That was really very, very sweet. Well done, Stacey, Bob, and Tobin. And finally, Nancy with an I from New Jersey. Also $103. Thank you, Nancy. Amazing. Beth and James and, and the doc and Julie. She's amazing. Congrats and keep making us happy. We need you. Aww. Well, done, well done. We're almost done with Scandal. You're such a good actress. I, I'm so obsessed with your acting. You're so good. Yeah, because, you know, when you came on, Bellamy, we were on... Beginning of season three. When you when the scandal when the, when the scandal reunion, which so we which hadn't was seen cool. all your, yeah. which was very hard because how do you get clips when you know like Marcus we hadn't even gotten to him yet and we were like oh my gosh and we, like spoiler alerts and like are we gonna not enjoy it and then I think it was either you or Katie who said oh don't worry there's just when you think something is this it's actually that and don't worry about it so it was we didn't worry. Worry. But we're obsessed with you. I literally made James watch an I Love Lucy episode because I was obsessed with the moment you did. We were mad about oh, something, and you were like, "You were like, why does it?" Ha and you did crazy fists in the air, and I was like, like, "Wait, Lucy does the same thing." And I made him literally watch it because I said, "Bellamy does the Lucy." Song. I said, "Seth, we're in the middle of a scandal <laughs> episode. Why are you pausing it and making me watch an I Love Lucy episode?" And he was right. I'm pretty bad. Like I have to sit on my hands usually during interviews because I'm a very nah, talky with my handsy kind of person. But now I'm going to Google Lucille Ball. I'm going to send you the clip. Is it's when Ricky says we have a select. It's after she mortifies herself at the restaurant with William Holden. You know William Holden when they go to Hollywood. Yes, yes, yeah. And then she's in the hotel room and he goes, a big celebrity's coming over. And she goes, oh, and she walks away, who? And he goes, William Holden. And she stops and she literally does that. And I'm like, I'm so obsessed with it. So anyway, just so you know, I'm going to send you the clip. <laughs> Send me the clip. Send me the clip. It makes me so mad. Oh, Bellamy, right, thank so you so much. Yeah. That's all I'll say. You know, we we had a great time, and we you know chewed on the scenery as much as we could. But it's just because the scenery was so meaty. You know how it is. Good writing yep. is everything. You're all murderers. All right. All right. right. We love you. Say hi we to Pedro. You.
Cheers, my love. Happy, happy. Mwah. Tommy Young. So fun. So Aww. obsessed with her. Okay. So much more. So I'm going to bring back the sass of Mark Shaman. He's going to be our co-host. I decided for tonight. Hi, Marky. Hi, Mark. Hello. Oh. I'm upstairs. This is where Lou keeps these things. There's oh, there my God. Oh, it's, they're so heavy. Oh, <laughs> Serious XM listeners, just so you know, Mark is holding a Mac Award, an Outer <laughs> Critics Award. <laughs> Wait, what is that? That's a Tony, a Grammy. It's only a Grammy and an Emmy. And then I'm just wearing these seven Oscar losses all over my face. Oh, <laughs> It'll happen. Um, all right. Yeah. So, Mark, I want you to stay around to watch some clips. So don't go anywhere. Yeah, you know what? You can F. <laughs> I don't like his attitude. Please welcome the masked singer, Dr. John LaPook. Hi, I thought I would, I just came back from uh, being out and I thought I would show you the true New York experience with the marks, wow. and the Nas ir irritation. And I'm sp extra specially careful because I am wearing an N95 because I'm seeing patients and I want to take extra special care. I just was in a cab coming from downtown to the Upper West Side. And I was able to look at all the restaurants. Um, some people are, they do it beautiful. There's a divider in between. They're six feet apart or more. And other ones, they're not. They're, you know, three feet, people too close. Um, anyway, uh, people really need to not let their guard down right now. John, I have a question. You yeah. know, in the, um, <clears throat> in the spring, when when COVID was especially bad here in New York, you know, you'd I'd hear stories or we'd see stories of medical professionals coming home and basically stripping before they walked into the house or the apartment and then showered before they would, you know, see their kids or their their you know their spouses. Yeah. Is, have we learned anything in the last six months in in the dreaded anticipation that things may very well get you know bad again? Um, with the flu season, do will health professionals still need to do all of that, or do we know so much more now that it's really airborne? Like, can you explain that? You know, yeah, I, I think that fear, and I certainly did it the two weeks that I was on the COVID wards at NYU Langone Health. Um, I did exactly that. I came in, I took my shoes off, I stripped, took all my yeah. stuff, walked over to the laundry, the whole thing, then right into the shower. I think I would still do that when seeing patients because the fear is, I mean, it's different when you're in the hospital on the COVID wards than when you're in your outpatient, uh, you know, in my office, seeing internal medicine and GI patients. But nevertheless, I still do the same thing because the fear is you're out there in the real world. I'm with patients. What if I have some virus on me in some way that I wasn't conscious of and that I can't see, you know, it's, it's invisible. So, uh, so in, in an abundance of caution, I'm still doing that. I don't think people need to do that when they're coming from the outside world. But I think if you're a doctor, then I'm going the extra mile to try to keep my patients safe. Uh, nevertheless, when I'm in there seeing my patients now, I've got an N95 mask on. I've got a face shield on. I kind of hate it. Um, right. You know, for, first of all, it's physically uncomfortable. You see that now. I kept it on on yeah. purpose because I wanted people to see. You see the marks there. Right. Um, I have to have them some zinc oxide, a special cream that I put on here with this schnoz uh, that gets excoriated. So um, I'm I'm just fiercely protective of my patients. So I think it's safe for people to come into their doctors, but I think I think you don't want to let your guard down. I will say that it is safe to come into to see your doctors, and right now we know that there are people who are not getting their mammograms, they're not getting their colonoscopy. Right. You got to do all that stuff again. I think I think the, the bottom line of what you're asking is we have learned a ton about how to put protect, how to don and doff protective equipment. We now have a little bit more protective equipment, still not enough. Right. We're still wearing an N95 for a week or maybe more. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I keep hearing, oh, that's not true. They did an amazing job of getting people protective equipment. So you actually, even in New York, a big city, you don't have enough protective equipment. It's not that we don't have enough in the hospital. Um, I think we do, but you know, when I'm when I'm an outpatient, they give you one and they expect you to wear it for a week or two. 
It's not like they're going to give you one every day. It's, they're not like, uh, you know, picking apples off of a crab apple tree. They're, they're, they're still in short supply. Relative. So, well, you know, so like we we went, we uh, went grocery shopping today, and we still wipe down the boxes and the and the stuff that goes in the freezer and the refrigerator and wash our hands. Like, is that are we overdoing it, or would you do you I, do that? I'm having the same exact discussion. We ordered a bunch of stuff in last night. We had take in, take out, take in, order in, yeah. and then yeah. we also had a bunch of groceries delivered today. And you know, I used to put a bowl of hot water in the sink. And suds, and really with a with a sponge. Now I'm taking the Clorox wipe and sort of wiping each one. I don't, in my heart of hearts, think that that's a big source of infection. I really don't. I right. think it's mostly the airborne. But you just think, what's the worst case? You always go worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is the delivery person had COVID on their hands. Uh, the I'm not the COVID to the disease and SARS. COVID-2 is the virus. So they have the coronavirus on their hands. That's the virus that causes COVID. Uh, and, you know, it's there and then you pick it up. And so in an abundance of caution, I don't think we talked about so many months ago going down the rabbit hole, didn't we? About going down the rabbit hole. Um, and then you just figure, you know, now we're so close to a vaccine. I think by the end of the year, beginning of next year, you don't want to have put in all this time being so careful and let your guard down which is our fear for what's going to happen in New York City. New York City is so good right now, but I really do worry that people are going to let their guard down. They're a little bit less careful. Tonight, we went over to a friend's house. We had, we had dinner, just the four of us on their rooftop. There was nobody around. We were a distance from each other, but we're kind of in the same pod. And then at the end, somebody from the apartment came up and walked right up to our table and was like too close. And the woman who I was, we were visiting God bless her. You know, she said, um, you need to back up a little bit. <laughs> However, she said it very directly. Right. Back up, bitch. Um, and I think that, that everybody needs to be given permission to do that. We had a, we called an Uber um, and we were, and it pulled up and it didn't have a partition. And we said, I said, you know, no, we canceled it. $5, you know, cancellation. Right. Fee. We, we waited till when we got, we got one with a, partition. Um, the first cab tonight that pulled up, normally we want to drive there, but we, we just didn't work out because my son has the car today. First co cab that came, the guy came and he wasn't wearing a mask. I mean, it was around his neck. And I'm thinking, no, I want this. I don't want aerosolization in the cab. And then at the last second, he pulls it, you know, he, he pulls it up. So that was a tell to me that he wasn't right. being careful enough. And we said, no, we're going to take the one after. So all of this is to say people need to, you know, get you know, find their voice, you know. But but John, even then, just because we've been coming into the city more because we've been having Wi-Fi issues and and so it's been more on my mind because we've been fortunate enough that we have a house outside the city and we've been basically in our bubble here for I would say ninety-nine percent of the last six months. But it's been making me think of these things more. So for example, when you and Kate were in the taxi or the Uber, did you so the drivers wearing the mask, you had the partition, but on top of that, did you have the windows rolled down and you oh, were wearing the masks? Hundred percent windows down. I don't care if it's 50 below zero, the window right. down to some extent really makes a huge difference. The aerosol scientists have gone through this, you, you, you know, cracking a door, opening the windows, huge difference. And so, you know, in the, in, in, and then we were wearing our masks. Right. I was wearing, I was wearing the N95 and right. a little schmata over it, whatever. She was wearing two masks, um, two surgical masks. I think you have to do that. I really do. I think you have to be careful, but, but, in, when it gets very cold, I think we're going to have to change, look, turn a little screw in our heads and say, okay, we're going to still go outside. We're going to wear three sweaters and a overcoat and we're going to, we're going to yep. eat outside or we're going to meet outside. And I think, look, people go to football games, right? And yeah. even, it's like 20 degrees out and they, they do terror mm -hmm. games and stuff. So I think, uh, because we, we are going to get a vaccine folks, we're getting the vaccine. Okay. So stay well, alive till then. I love all the practical advice. Thank you so yeah, much. Actually, I, have, I, have, I want to put a, a questionnaire out there. I have an idea. Because yeah. we talk each time about coronavirus. I was thinking tonight, tonight we did this, but would people like to hear me talk about 
other things, melanoma protection. Uh, how, how do you how do you know if you have a mole whether it's melanoma or not? Talking about belly pains, chest pain, other th other general medical things. Would people be interested in hearing a, a little bit, a little bit of that, along with the coronavirus? Because probably it's a similar audience, and they've heard about the mask, they've heard, they've heard, they've heard, and they go, "Oh, the poop's coming on now. It's going to be the same old story." Maybe we want to talk about some other things. So if people have some questions, uh, general medical questions, I'm, I do internal medicine, GI. Anyway, just a thought. All right, we'll put it out there for the yeah. audience to to comment and tweet and Facebook and all that stuff. Oh, no. Sure. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dr. LaPook. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> Bye. I'm going to hold up my mouth. Okay, hold on. Um, All so right. Wait, I'm bringing back Mark Shaman and yes. Chops. Yes. Hi, Marky. Hello. Uh. <laughs> He's an angel. Hello. I didn't see you. Come in. I got you in the middle of a book. All right. So we're showing some fun clips. I don't know if you've seen this, Mark. This is um, when Les Mis was on the show. I think you'll appreciate it. We want to do the no. confrontation scene between Valjean and Javert, which happens. But, you know, Fantine is dead during that whole scene. So we had Randy Graff recreate her role as Fantine, James Wesley as Jean Valjean, and Terry Mann as Javert. And I think you'll appreciate the filming <laughs> and Shelby Rasper's editing. Here we go. And Randy Graff's amazing performance as Fantine. That's she was funny. Tony nominated. I'm shut there! I was born inside a chair. I was born with skull like you. I am from the doctor too! And this I swear to you tonight. There is no place for you to hide. Your child will live within my care. Wherever you may hide away. And I will raise her to the light. I swear, I swear to you, you, I will be there. Aww. <laughs> it was beautiful. That's uh. Thing with the, the chair bit so got it uh, so marky how is your puzzle wrist or whatever it's called um what the the, the new one or the old one the puzzle elbow there was there was a puzzle injury well that was a year or so ago the elbow that i had have an operation from leaning on it while doing jigsaw puzzles for 18 hours a day yeah <laughs> now i now i'm addicted to doing them oh and then my back went out and that was hideous <laughs> And I tried to do them, and like a month ago, Lou said, let's do them again. The second I started, <clears throat> all the pains came back. So now I only do them on my iPad. I have, I have a, the, an app where I can do jigsaw puzzles on my iPad. And oh. even, though, even those, I have now twitches and pains. and uh, <laughs> I live for Advil. Advil is my, my holy grail. <laughs> I have tennis album. <laughs> Um, okay, I have some more fun clips to show. So, well, that's the whole point of the show. It's a, it's a best. Hold on. Private. Oh, I love it. Um, okay, so this is. Hold on, where are we? There you go. So this is on my mother's <clears throat> birthday celebration. Oh. <laughs> David Katz requested this. This is my mom singing a '70s disco oh. hit, adding extra lyrics. And I, anyway, basically, I get to control who's on screen and off, as you'll see. This is my mom, <laughs> Varla Jean Merman, and me and James for her birthday. I sang a song that's sort of original, oh, no. and I changed the words. Uh huh. Macho, macho, macho man. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> huh? It's so rude. <laughs> Not in the mood for it. All right, so Mark, the main reason we brought you on the show is for free entertainment. We need. Oh. To, we got to hear a song. Oh. Well, then you're going to have to show a clip. Well, I think, what, what, what am I, uh, um, what? Do you well, have wait, you're, working, you're working on two effing new Broadway bound musicals, Some Like It Hot and Bombshell Smash. Surely you have something <laughs> up your sleeve. <laughs> exactly. Besides muscles. What? Uh, um, what? Um, Any requests, audience? 
I could say, oh no, I, we already had what well, didn't we play Bette Midler singing a doctor, a doctor? Uh, yes, she could be that was, that was her. the song I wrote for my sister's wedding. Oh, so many tears ago. A doctor, a doctor, my daughter Joyce is marrying a doctor, a doctor. So if your kids need shots, just call up my daughter and ask for her husband, the doctor. Cavalt, I make plots. Actually, right now he's an intern, but soon he'll be a urologist. So you should all make appointments if it burns when you pish. Every checkup buys a setting and a soybean dish. A doctor, a doctor, a willy, I'm cavelling. It's a Jewish Mother's Day because now I can complain about every ache and pain and never have to pay. <laughs> and here comes Chops. Mark. Chops. <laughs> he doesn't like Zoom. Mark, you still oh, got it. Oh my gosh. All right. We have so many clips set. I think we're going to have to do a third All like, right, we're gonna have to, next we're gonna have week or something. Up. We have too many clips. We have so many clips we haven't even shown. Marky, we'll call you again around 7.59. <laughs> so prepare. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Bye, Mark. Everybody. Thank you, everybody. And we're gonna. I'm gonna hear. We'll, we'll just continue celebrating our 200th next week. Mark, give us some um, exit music. I'm gonna play them. The the um, what's it called? The credits. We haven't <laughs> we haven't really added any music to it. One, two, three, hit it. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm exhausted. 